Missouri. Check out the brackets now still to come. The host team, Chaminade, will take on Pitt, and the late game will be San Diego State taking on BYU. Hi, folks. Thanks for joining us. John Chambi alongside Miles Simon, the headliner in this tournament, no question about it. It is Arizona, so what makes them so good? Well, I think there's a lot to like about Sean Miller's team. This is probably his deepest and most talented team. He has some great experience also with T.J. McConnell, Brandon Ashley back from the foot injury, and Caleb Tarzuski on the inside. You bring in a top five recruit in Stanley Johnson. But once again with this Arizona team, they'll hang their hat on the defensive end. They were one of the best in the nation last year. I think they only get better this year because he'll go nine or ten deep. They're long and athletic at nearly every position on the, on the floor, and I think they'll be able to put up a lot of points this year. All right, meanwhile, for Missouri, a very different look. Eight new players and a first-year head coach in Kim Anderson. Kim Anderson's really going to rely heavily on Techie Gill, Caesar, and Wes Clark. These two guards are going to need to put some major points on the board if they're going to want to pull the upset against the Wildcats. Tigers have their work cut out for them here today. Let's get it tipped off here in Lahaina. Yep, more basketball coming your way here in Hawaii, Arizona, and Missouri. Second of four from the A Sports Maui Invitational quarterfinal action. And inside the Lahaina Civic Center, we get ready to tip. And we give you our starting lineups. First for Arizona, it'll be Gabe York, TJ McConnell. Those two in the backcourt, Ashley Johnson and Tarzuski will work up front. Meanwhile, for Missouri, the Tigers will go with this look. Monte Gil Caesar, he's a guy that is part of their scoring attack along with Wes Clark and then Keith Schamberger, the transfer up front. It's Jonathan Williams the third, and Ryan Rosberg. Kim Anderson coaching at his alma mater, first year head coach. He's at Division II Central Missouri, led them to a national title, and a guy who was a star as a player at Missouri, an assistant as well for the Tigers. So he is coming home. Meanwhile, for Sean Miller, his sixth season after a lot of success at Xavier, and he has taken them to a couple of Elite Eights, including last year where they lost that heartbreaker at overtime to Wisconsin. Ready to work here. And Tarzuski wins the tip. McConnell controls Arizona basketball. And you see Missouri coming out in that man-to-man. -man. Let's see if Arizona can try to establish an inside presence, either Tarzuski or Ashley, early in this basketball game. Kim Anderson said they are a man-to-man -man team, but they will play some zone today to test that outside shooting for Arizona. Ashley a little short on that shot, out of bounds. And Missouri basketball. And a nice job by Jonathan Williams there, just kind of walling up and forcing Ashley to shoot that jump, jump hook with a little bit of a fade. Clark Gill Caesar. And as well, Schamberger. That's the threesome as far as the guards, and they will lead the score. And the matchup to watch right now is number 13. Montague Gill Caesar against Stanley Johnson there over over on the wing. Those two familiar with each other from some international basketball in the under 18s this summer as Montague played for Canada and Stanley Johnson rep representing the U.S. Williams got just a piece of the shot clock, or at least the shot clock didn't expire, did it? Did that get a piece of the rim? That's what was difficult to say. So they're gonna they're gonna give that a look. Dick Cartmel and Mike Stevens. Well, they received the turnaround jumper. There was two on the clock. Hard to tell from that angle. Yeah, it did get a piece of the rim. So indeed, it'll stick with Missouri. And Clark will launch and hit. Wes Clark, he and Gil Caesar have been the twosome that have led this offense. Well, he's had three straight games and double figures, averaging 14 points per game. Has improved his outside shooting 46% on the year. McConnell passed up the three, got a little closer, couldn't hit, out of bounds. And it'll be Arizona basketball. And the freshman Stanley Johnson to inbounds. Johnson, one of the top recruits in the country. ESPN had him at number seven. 
Flip inside of the seven-footer, and they turn it over. Tarzuski, that one eluded him. And really not a good look by Ashley because Tarzuski was almost too far underneath the hoop. There was no room for him to go and chase that basketball and catch it and gather and score. Ashley would have been better off either driving the ball or kicking it back out and setting up the offense. Schamberger giving off Gil Caesar, the quick double team. And Williams hits Jonathan Williams the third. The most improved part of his basketball game. Coach Anderson talked to us yesterday at practice about how he's extended his range to 15 to 17 feet. It's taken away from his offensive rebounding, but you see he has the soft touch. York off the mark. Karzuski the board deflected and now kicks back out. McConnell sets up. Karzuski can't hit. And then a foul underneath. I That'll be on Brandon Ashley as first. I know Tarzewski's capable of making that 15 to 17 footer, but he needs to go to back down mode right there. He's such a physical presence at seven feet tall, 245 pounds, 5% body fat. Make Rosberg have to guard you. Missouri will live with Caleb Tarzewski shooting 15 to 17 feet. Williams on Ashley. Out of bounds, and it'll be Arizona basketball. Jonathan Williams, the third, a guy, as Miles mentioned, his shooting has improved. Kim Anderson even said he'd like him to be a little more selfish on the offensive end, shoot it a little bit more. Well, with the production that they lost last year, and Jabari Brown, Ernest, Ernest Ross, and Jordan Clarkson, Jonathan Williams, the third, is going to be relied heavily upon to score the basketball and be probably their biggest inside presence. Eight newcomers for Missouri, including six freshmen and sophomore in the top ten in their rotation. And they get the foul underneath. That one is on Ryan Rosberg, his first. And right now, you can see the early game plan for Arizona to try to get post touches. Nearly every possession so far, Ashley's had a post touch. Tarzewski's had a couple of them. They're going to try to put Missouri, who has a lack of depth, into foul trouble. And a beautiful inbounds play. The nice seal by Tarzuski, the little touch pass, and the slam. McConnell with a good find there. Arizona on the board. It's 5-2. Now the freshman, Gil Caesar, seeing his second long athletic defender in less than four minutes in this basketball game as Ronde Hollis Jefferson is now taking on that challenge. It'll stay with Missouri. Rondé Hollis Jefferson into the game. He'll play starters minutes for them, but he comes off the bench. Now this is Clark. Kind of a, a scoring lead guard. He and Schamberger both run the point, really. Nice up and under move there by Ryan Rosberg. Really good move by Rosberg. He Power dribbles to the middle, gives the little the little head fake. Tarzuski bites on it. Tarzuski, usually a very solid defender, gives up the layup. Johnson with a three. Tarzuski the four. McConnell inside, and Ashley with the left hand puts it home. Good job by McConnell probing the defense. He gets underneath the basket where he can see the whole floor. Ashley with the nice dive, the reverse pivot, and the soft left hand touch. And McConnell with such outstanding vision. Guy who distributes. Here's Williams. And Tarzuski the board. And there's almost going to be an onus on Missouri to get a good shot on the first shot every time because there's not going to be many offensive rebounds to be had, and especially if Jonathan Williams is shooting perimeter jump shots. Ashley a three, way off the mark. And now Clark looking to push it. Clark pulls up, may have gotten fouled. McConnell looked like he grabbed his jersey a little bit. Clark was complaining as he went up. McConnell off the window. And Rosberg comes away with it. Ryan Rosberg, their junior. The older brother Andy actually played at Missouri. Three-point game. 
And right now, if you're Missouri, you're happy with how it's going in the first five and a half minutes. You're getting good shots. You haven't turned the basketball over. You've been solid on the defensive end, forcing contested looks by the Wildcats, and you have a three-point lead. And there's a turnover. Here's McConnell the other way. Ashley collects. And long. Explosive to the hoop, Brandon Ashley. Brandon Ashley engaged early in this game. The secondary break, the quick first step, the soft touch, and the contact. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Maui Visitors and Convention Bureau. And Back in Maui, a one-point game. Brandon Ashley absorbing the contact, laying it in, and it'll go to the line. Last year, though, it was a crucial injury that involved Brandon Ashley. Suffered a foot injury on this play on February 1st at Cal in front of his friends and family back home, and that ended his season. He played 22 games all starts. 11 and a half points, 5.8 rebounds, and look at that, they were 21 and 0. They lost that game on a buzzer beater and finished the year 12 and 5. Rondé Hollis Jefferson said they were lost without Brandon Ashley. And yeah, they really lost the rhythm. It happened so late in the season that the team just never seemed to fully recover or gain that momentum back once Ashley, one of their leaders, went down. But he's back fully healthy, full participation in practice. They ended up being a torn ligament in his foot, which you can see by the drives and his activity early in this game. He's back to the Brandon Ashley free injury. Tied at seven, closing on 14 minutes to go for his cat. Tigers and Cats. And you can see this Arizona team has a lot of versatility with their different lineups. They go a little bit smaller with Elliott Pitts now playing the two and Rondé Hollis Jefferson at the four spot as he looks down for defensive rebound. Becky Gill Caesar could convert. Hollis Jefferson. And that's what makes Ronda Hollis Jefferson such a tough matchup. Snatches the defensive rebound in traffic, dribble weaves full court, and then a soft touch from eight feet off the glass. I'll take Bill Caesar loses the ball. It's a turnover. Parker Jackson caught right in the game. Johnson a miss, but gets his rebound and then his foul. Here's Ronda Hollis. Look, he snatches that rebound over Gil Caesar. Probes the defense, sees the traffic, the nice low dribble. Post stops him. But the beautiful bank shot from about 10 feet. All right, what about this guy at the line? Stanley Johnson with the top recruits in the country. You guys went to the same high school. You've known him a long time. Stanley Johnson's a guy I've got to spend a lot of time around over the last four or five years. He's just a special young man. He, he's a hard worker. He has this big body, 6'7", about 245 pounds, but, but it sits well on his frame because he's very muscular. He's thick. He's strong. He is the best player in modern-day basketball history. Coach Gary McKnight, over 1,000 wins. The wing is coaching the state of California. Stanley Johnson won four state titles. He won a USA basketball gold medal at three different age groups. Sean Miller couldn't stop raving about him. Sean Miller saying he is trending up, continuing to learn what it takes to compete at this level. Out of bounds. Arizona basketball, five turnovers on this area. And right there, you see he affects the game at both ends. He attacks on the offensive end, and they're active on the defensive end. The hard closeout. Active hands deflects the ball off the Mizzou player and forces the turnover. 10 2 Arizona run. Parker Jackson, Cartwright handling here. Get him 10 to 12 minutes just to spell McConnell most games. Jackson Cartwright, kind of a change of pace guard. I know he's small in stature, but he's quick. He has long arms. He's an excellent passer. He's best in pick and roll situations, but has also been shooting the ball well early in the season. Exploding to the goal, guess who? Rondé Hollis Jefferson with the footback on the miss by Jackson Cartwright. And there's where Arizona can just hurt you with their length, their athleticism on the inside. Parker Jackson Cartwright gets all the way to the rim. Rondé Hollis Jefferson doesn't give up on the play and tips it in. 
Yep. Made Isabel into the game for Missouri. Now Missouri Deuce Bello as well. Now Missouri's going to need to find an answer for this run. Maybe West Clark, Jonathan Williams, get those guys going. Inside blocked by Hollis Jefferson. Keanu Post is fouled. Good action there, post to post passing after the pick and pop. Jonathan Williams throws it inside. Rondé Hollis Jefferson coming from the backside and commits the foul. Post to post to post pass. <laughs> the auto post, the junior college transfer, played 30 games last year for Missouri. Anything that Coach Anderson gets from post on the offensive end is really a bonus. He averages three points per game through their first three outings. More of a defender, a screener, a rebounder, a big body to bang around on the inside. And here we see the first possession of zone by the Missouri Tigers. Arizona's faced a lot of zone in their first couple matchups. Mount St. Mary's, University of California, Irvine. Perimeter shooting, a weakness of this Arizona team. Ashley, that baseline jumper. lost the handle. Jackson Cartwright speeding ahead. Alice Jefferson of the putback couldn't get it to go. And now in the hands of West Clark. Five point game. With this lineup in the game, West Clark, their second leading scorer, is going to look to need to be aggressive on the offensive end. Shot clock now under 10. Bello is fouled. Timeout on the court. New head man in Missouri. Kim Anderson waited a long while and finally got the job at his alma mater. Uh, Kim Anderson, the head man at Mizzou, back where he was a star as a player. 1977 Big 8 Co-Player of the Year. An assistant for Norm Stewart from 82 to 85, but also 91 to 90. 90 coach at Missouri, but at Central Missouri as a head coach, 03 to 2014. Tons of success, including a national title last year. And a guy who's in the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame, not just as a player, but as a coach as well seven division two tournament appearances with central missouri for the national championship last year against west liberty where eric bovaird won star eric bovaird is the head coach at chaminade the silver swords the host team they'll be in action coming up tonight taking on Pitt, and then byu and san diego state to follow that one well, Boog, I think this was a home run hire for Mizzou. You bring home a, a, a true son, as they say, and, and no better guy to promote your program sometimes than a guy that's played there, coached there, is from that area, he has a passion for Missouri basketball, the university. He's going to be committed long term to building this program and, and getting him to the top of the SEC. Schamberger knocks down that jumper. Schamberger, a really nice pickup. He's a graduate transfer. This is now his third Division I school. Started his career at San Jose State. Played at, played at Hawaii. And now finishing up as a Mizzou Tiger, but he's a steady point guard that can make some shots. Been a starter almost nearly his whole career. Yeah, this is 97th college start. Led the Big West in assists last year. York can hit, fight for the loose ball. There's Johnson flying in, and he's fouled. He'll shoot two. York is such a key component to this team. He's their best three-point shooter. If he's making shots, it just stretches out everything else on the offensive end. It frees up driving lanes for Stanley Johnson, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. It'll give post touches to Tarzewski and Ashley down low. York is the most improved player, in the words of Sean Miller. Has gotten better on the defensive end each and every year. 
and whenever he's making threes, you can watch out for this Wildcat team. He's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, kind of a specialist for that. Eventually, Deuce Bello comes away with a loose ball, and they get a foul on Stanley Johnson. <laughs> Stanley, Stanley kind of Johnson is looking for someone <laughs> to give the bat. I thought he was going to hand it to you. Well, first he was kind of in disbelief that a foul was called. You know, Stanley, when he throws this 245 pounds on a guy, you know they're going to get they're going to get bumped off track. Yeah. Angelo Allen hands off here, and now Isabel with Gabe York on him. You watch Arizona play on the defensive end. They play the pack line defense. Not really out to nine. They'll let you pass the ball around the perimeter, surround the paint, make you shoot contested threes, and tough twos, just like that one. Off balance, Allen couldn't hit one and done on the shot. And McConnell flips it up ahead. Johnson off the window and good. Excellent pass break. Started with the rebound by the clean rebound by Victor. The long outlet. And then I love the throw ahead pass by TJ McConnell, the unselfish play. And then not an easy shot by Stanley Johnson. A time called here. Sean Hull. The shot clock just went out on that end of the court. So the shot clock over the basket, right there, out. 17-11, Arizona leading Missouri, 9-13 to go here first half. Kansas State ended up beating Purdue in our opener. And two more games coming up following this one up tonight. It'll be Pitt and Chaminade, BYU, and San Diego State, EA Sports, Maui Invitational. That's what we mentioned. Marcus Foster at 24, K-State 188-79. They await the winner of this one. That'll take place 7.30 Tuesday on ESPN. Hit Shamanon. And then the Aztecs going up against BYU. Stanley Johnson, the prize freshman for Arizona. Sean Miller continues to do a great job recruiting. Good hands there. McConnell picks it up quickly. Johnson up ahead, lost his footing for a moment, loose ball, and Missouri comes away with it. Here's Wes Clark. Clark lost his footing. A little sloppy right now. Missouri with eight turnovers here in the first half. This one, Victor going to work down low. And Missouri the rebound. And West Clark, he's limping up over there on the other side of the floor as Schamberger drives to the basket. Looks like West Clark with the knee, his knee is bothering. I don't know if it's from that fall or he twisted something on the defensive end. Clark, one of their toughest players, about to come out of this game. Montague Gil Caesar. Coming in. He's in some pain. The last foul, by the way, on Tarzuski, his second. And that's the last thing the Missouri Tiger fans and Kim Anderson want to see. Wes Clark, arguably their toughest player, can be a go to guy on this team. Look to the sidelines. A team that's already lacking depth. Schamberger down. Missouri lost. Missouri, Kansas City to start the year. Williams and way off the mark. How about Arizona feeling comfortable on the defensive end, switching their point guard, TJ McConnell, on that pick and roll onto the power forward, Jonathan Williams. McConnell tries a three. And a rebound pulled down by Naaman Wright. Wright, one of their freshmen. Sets the screen, Schamberger, and Post with the punt back. Four point game. A 
Ashley from the elbow. Got it. Nice curl action by Stanley Johnson. Defenders close out to Amar, makes the unselfish play, and hits his wide open teammate Brandon Ashley for the 15 foot shot. So Ashley with nine of their 19. And again, this is the end of the court where Sean Miller's kind of put his stamp on the Wildcats program. They're so good defensively. Top six last year in field goal percentage defense and in scoring defense. That's in the nation. Inside, Gil Caesar is fouled, and he'll go to the line. So a timeout on the court, and we'll take it with him. Arizona by six here inbound. Huh. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. By six, John Shelby, Miles Simon with you, Wes Clark. One of the top players for Missouri Bank is knee and had to come out of the game. Here's the play. Right knee, bang, out. And that's right in that sensitive part, either on the inside of the knee or right on the top of that kneecap. You see he just slips and he bangs it straight onto the floor. And he's still been kind of massaging it and rubbing it on the sideline. No ice being applied, but you can see he, he's in some definite pain. West Clark is a guy that Coach Kim Anderson and his Tiger team cannot afford to lose. Arguably their toughest guy, an excellent defender, and their second leading scorer. Well, the guy who is their leading scorer is this man at the line, Montague Gil Caesar. The two of them combined coming into this game. Missouri had scored 195 points. Those two had combined to score 92 of them. So two guys, Clark and Gil Caesar, basically scoring half of their points through the first three games coming in. And that, by the way, Gil Caesar's first point of the afternoon. Gil Caesar, a young man from Vaughan, Ontario. He's Canadian, Huntington Prep High School. He played for assistant coach Rob Fulford sitting right next to Coach Kim Anderson there. They got him to reclassify. He was originally a two, class of 2015 player. Had the qualifications, the grades to come in a year early and a big time pickup for Kim Anderson late in the recruiting. Big pickup, talented player. Played with Andrew Wiggins. Yeah, they said if they didn't get him in the spring and he was able to stay in the 2015 class, that he was going to be one of the top players in all of high school basketball. Oh. I want in and out for Williams, but a correct bigger part. A put back there by Williams. <laughs> And a timeout called by Arizona. Two point game, Arizona on top. Check out that last bucket is. Well, great cross-screen action right there to get Jonathan Williams into the post. But look at Ron Friesen. Look at Ronda Hollis Jefferson. He's not really doing much. He's not helping. He's ball watching. And then they're able to sneak in for the layup on the putback by D'Angelo Allen. Turned his head. Now and went right past him for the easy hoop on the miss. And the lead is two. And I like Missouri just hanging around. A nice slow pace. Keeping it in a low possession ball game. Hits can't hit a three. Yeah, this is right where Missouri wants it. Missouri is absolutely down for this to be kind of ugly. Wildcats, by the way, 0 for 7 for 3. Oh, oh. Tarzuski, and that'll go the other way. That's on Jonathan Williams, the third, his second. We saw that last possession. Arizona did a good job of navigating the zone. They got the ball inside and out and to one of their best three-point shooters. And Elliott Pitts is just not able to knock it down. The teams will continue to zone Arizona if they are not able to make perimeter jump shots. And some of that burden, a lot of that burden is going to fall on York, McConnell, Pitts, and somewhat Stanley Johnson. Hollis Jefferson worked hard in his jumper in the offseason. There's York. He can't hit. 0 for 8 from 3. 
Again, another good look. York right there, kind of quick shot it. And what I mean by that, he didn't hold his follow through. The, the release felt good, but he snapped it back and didn't complete the shot. Well, Caesar is fouled, and he'll go to the line. A little more basketball coming your way Wednesday, ESPN2, the battle for Atlanta's quarterfinal action. Butler and number five, North Carolina. That'll be at noon Eastern. Then Oklahoma, UCLA. After that, UAB, Wisconsin. And then I cap Florida and Georgetown. Gilsey's are really a big time scorer. 16 points per game already early in his college career. We mentioned that he went to Huntington Prep, which is also the same high school as Andrew Wiggins. Both guys from Canada. And he has a nice frame to him, 6'6", 215 pounds. Plays with a lot of confidence. And playing a lot, playing over 31 minutes a game so far to start his college career. But I think the one thing really Coach Anderson loves about him is that he mentioned in, in practice his effort level and his intensity. And that's something that if, if you're head coach, you don't have to coach those two things, especially with a freshman, you're in pretty good shape. Terrible fight right here, yeah. Too many guys on one side of the floor. Jackson Cartwright knifing through in a finger roll. He's going to be a spark plug for Coach Sean Miller. He can give TJ McConnell a spell, six to seven minutes each half, help you on the defensive end, and there make a little play on the offensive end. Johnson on the move, the freight train. And now back the other way. Gil Caesar at the bucket. And one. It looked like it might have got touched while it was in the rim. It looked like the Missouri player touched the rim while the ball was in or on the cylinder. Here you see the hard drive by Gil Caesar and the soft touch. To the offensive Dalton, he could not touch the rim there when the ball is still circling around the basket. It was Keanu Post who touched the rim. That foul on Parker Jackson Cartwright is first. And a three-point play for Montague Gill Caesar. Now a good sign for the Missouri Tigers as Wes Clark enters, his, enters the basketball game. A tie game, four minutes to go in the Missouri crowd. Is loving what they're seeing from the Tigers. And now they're going to play Jackson, Cartwright, and McConnell together. Missouri on an 8 2 run. See their daring Stanley Johnson to shoot that three, playing him strictly as a driver. Ellis Jefferson to the corner. And Jackson, Cartwright stepped on the sideline, out of bounds, and turned over. Third on that result. 21 here in Mountain. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is on BYU to 11:30 Eastern ESPN. Two winner. This one will take on Kansas State tomorrow. Wes Clark showed you Clark banging his knee on the deck. And he is in the game, so that's at least a good sign. Just causing him some pain, no question. Missouri looking to take the lead. Gil Caesar. And now Alice Jefferson on the move. to the zone, forcing Arizona to be a jump shooting team. 0 for 8 from behind the arc. Got to get Hollis Jefferson in that high post area. They get a foul down low. Uh, Montague Gil Caesar is first. Team foul number six. Arizona guards are 1 for 10 on the floor so far. Jackson Cartwright, the only four, and he comes out of the game. And the only guy that's really been effective on the offensive end is Brandon Ashley, four for seven from the field. He's in the game with two fouls.
Johnson buries that one. It's a three for the freshman. I like the fact that he came off the baseline rug, ready to shoot the basketball. Got his feet set, had excellent rotation on that ball, and drills it. And they get a foul there on Stanley Johnson. That'll be his second. And the coaching staff urging Stanley Johnson to just show his hands, not put it on the defender. But Arizona in a tough spot there because now Missouri's in the double bonus. Two shots here, 10 team fouls on Arizona. Three point game here in the first half, 240 to go. short of the NCAA tournament and ended the stretch of five straight years in the NCAA. Toss inside, here's Ashley and he's fouled. Been uneven offensively for Arizona. Ashley's been the, the real lone bright spot. Yeah, he's been aggressive from the jump, looking for his jump shot, looking for you know, his own points on the on the offensive end there. E.J. McConnell comes off the high pick, and Ashley ducks in on the ball side and is able to draw the foul. Ashley hits the front end. He's got 10. That foot injury that he suffered last year against Cal, or I guess earlier this year against Cal at the Redford in February. He is totally healthy now. You and I had a chance to talk to uh, trainer Justin Kikoski about Ashley spending time with T.J. McConnell gets his hands on that ball. A steal in a bucket. Arizona leads by five. First two to T.J. People forget T.J. McConnell was top five in steals his first two years at Duquesne. Already averaging four steals a game through the first three this year. Gil Caesar with a big three. He's a scorer. Was ready to catch and shoot. Great arc on that shot. Knocks down the deep three. Not lying up the defense. Now backs out for a second. Pulls up. Now West Clark. Good job picking out. And right there, David Wright couldn't hit. Boog on that last possession is something you rarely see teams be able to do. They started out in zone. Went one, two, two, but halfway through the possession, went to man. But that time the good matter is McConnell drops off the pick. The drag pick gets in the paint and finds out he hits. And they need three point look. Connell and Sandberg are having words with each other right now as they go to their respective corners. <laughs> Five point game, 106 to go in the first half. Just a little drag action, and look, he draws three defenders. And Montecchio Caesar helps too much in the lane. You have to recognize who you're guarding on the perimeter there or in your area in the zone. Elliott Pitts, one of the best shooters on this Arizona squad. They're not able to recover, and he makes a pay. Sean Diller coming off a, a win over Irvine. He liked the victory because they played some zone against him. He knows teams are going to play zone against Arizona this year. Game was tight. They had to fight for it. And UCI is a team that has great size across their front line, good athleticism. They're the favorites to win the Big West Conference. They have an excellent guard in Luke Nelson that Gabe York did a good job of, of limiting his touches and his shots and making it work for everything that he had. Allen finds Clark, but he couldn't finish. I love the ATO. Sets up the back door, perfectly executed, just no finish by Clark. McConnell, got it. 
Second possession in a row. Drag ball screen is just a late screen in secondary offense. McConnell turns the corner and hits a nice pull up from 15 feet. Biggest lead of the game for Arizona up by seven. Schamberger. Clark pulls up. And Tarzuski rips down the board. Six rebounds for Tarzuski. Good hand, Schamberger deflected it over to Allen. And now Missouri the other way. He was a second too late. You see the open, the open player. Becky Gill Caesar couldn't hit, and that'll do it. 32 25 at the end of the first half. So Arizona with a seven point lead. Now we send you back to the studio, the Land Rover halftime report. There's <coughs> Jamie Sire, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. Thank you, gentlemen. This is the Land Rover Halftime Report, and we start you off with a game that you saw earlier here on ESPN2 Kansas. Now here on ESPN2 alongside Jay Williams and Seth Greenberg, I'm Jamie Sire. Arizona with a seven-point lead, but uh, definitely struggled here in the first half. What happened? Well, you had them the whole yeah, way. You had them <laughs> you you blowing Missouri out. when we were on break that you know, Arizona's <laughs> going to be an easy game for them. It's <laughs> like a rookie hazing going on right now. <laughs> Arizona's an old-school team. They were 11th in pace in the Pac-12 last year. They're a grinded-out team, void of a big-time jump shooter. So they're going to play close games. But Brandon Ashley, a guy that... They're 21 and 0 with last year. Came in and gave him great minutes in the first half. He's a big target. He can shoot the ball with range. He can keep balls alive on the glass. Brandon Ashley is a guy that's going to have to find ways to score because at times Arizona can be offensively challenged. And you see right there, it starts with middle penetration. Missouri in the first half did a really good coaching job by Ken Anderson, first year of coaching. Came out in the zone. In order to be in the zone, you can't just pass the ball around the perimeter. You have to have guys like Cartwright. Guys like McConnell who are able to get the ball into the gaps of that zone, and guys have to be ready to shoot. And that's where you saw a big time shot by Elliot Pitts. I think Elliot Pitts and Gabe York are two names that you have to pay attention to for Arizona this year. Arizona obviously has an advantage on the boards. They can kill you with second chance rebounds, but teams are going to start to pack it in, like we said earlier. That's what Missouri did. Pitts was able to shoot him out of it. And they made the last two threes, which is huge because once you start making a couple of threes, then all of a sudden, instead of shrinking, the defense is going to close out and extend. Then you can slash, get to the yeah. basket, but they've got to have someone step up and make some shots because they're not a team that's going to blow it up the floor and get easy buckets in transition. They'll run on long rebounds and steals, but they're going to play in the half court. And if you're going to play in the half court, someone's got to step up and make and shots. And I also love the fact that Sean Miller pulled over his seasoned veteran point guard and TJ McConnell said, there's no need to force a pass. And those little things, I know people say, oh, it was just a turnover, whatever. But those are the little things that help you win championships. You're high on the cats or not? I, I am high on the cats. I think they have a chance to be a you good team. You think they're overranked? No, I, I, I do think a little bit. Wow, look, I do think they're <laughs> overranked. I think if, if we're talking about the number two team in the nation struggling to beat teams, like a Missouri team that lost 75% of their scoring. Now, look, we still have the second half of the the game to go. And I still think Arizona is one of the most talented teams in the country. But if they don't have the ability to knock you out, that's going to be tough for them in the Pac-12. They're hard to score against. They're physical. They're tough. They're mature. They're just void. Are you agreeing with me? Go make Are you agreeing with me? Is well, that what you're saying? Down. Here, you're right. agreeing with me. Right now today, you've got Kentucky here, Duke here, and then you know what? Yep. Everybody, Shake it exactly. up. Okay. Exactly. Well, maybe one of the guys that will step up in the second half is Stanley Johnson, a guy that was very, very highly ranked coming into this season. We'll have more on his story ahead. This halftime report is presented by Land Rover. Above and beyond. Stanley Johnson was one of the highest rated players in the country last year, ranking seventh in ESPN's top 100. Now he plays for the Arizona Wildcats, but for how long? A look now at the ceiling for a guy who stands six foot eight. Stanley Johnson. I had never seen the dude like this guy. <laughs> Stanley Johnson to the hoop. I have definitely not played with anyone like that. He's coming down the lane and people are trying to step up and he just tomahawk dunked him. And he throws it down with a strong right. Here's a little signature windmill. When you cuff it with one hand and bring it around. Yeah, I love that. I mean, he's 
a physical specimen. I mean, he's, man, his combination of skill and his athletic ability is, is it's not something you see every day. Uh, without further ado, uh, I want to announce that I'm going to the University of Arizona. I picked Arizona because I thought it was the best program for me personally and for what I wanted to do in college. Um, I talked to Coach Miller and all the other coaches in the country. They all said they wanted to win a national championship, but I felt like me coming here because of the players that we already have here, hopefully we can knock on the door and get to a Final Four and national championship run. Stanley shows up uh, with a body and, and I think a spirit and, and an endurance about him that you don't see very often, and that's his gift. You know, we're bringing in somebody who, no question, we're counting on to be a difference maker for us. You know, I think the best thing about him is his confidence. And I've never seen a, a player as confident as him. He hates losing. That's what anything. Video games, basketball, he's just a competitor. And, like, you can't beat that. You can't. From what I've learned in high school, obviously, a lot of people know that I won four, four state championships in a row. so. Hopefully I can bring some of that winning mentality to the team. This year, all I expect from the team is to give our hardest effort and honor the process every day. So I think if we do that, um, I think we should be on our way to a Final Four this year. And once we get there, I think anything can happen. For three in the rankings, there was actually a ballot that was left out. It led to a miscalculation that put them at two, but Arizona officially number three in the rankings again. Due to that left ballot, that was the left out ballot. That was the reason why. All right, so Kansas State won earlier, 88-79. They await the winner of this one still to come. You got Pitt and Chaminade, BYU, and San Diego State. Missouri able to hang around John Chambi and Miles Simon. Techie Gil Caesar, a large part of the reason why Missouri's in this game. Yeah, Gil Caesar, he got off to a slow start in this game. Couldn't get good looks early. But then he kind of went takeover when West Park went down with the little knee bang. Goes in transition, takes the contact, goes up strong off two feet. Now knocks down the contested three-point shot, ends up with 10 points in the first half, gets to the foul line seven times, and then Brandon Ashley showing no ill effects from last season. Foot injury, the penetration, the dive to the basket, now showing the quick first step, absorbs the light contact, and gets the and one. Ashley really is the only guy that has it going on the offensive end for the Wildcats with 10 points on four for seven shooting. Missouri basketball to begin the second half. Ryan Rosberg will start the second half. Picked up a couple of quick fouls and limited to just six minutes in the first half. Williams. Foul on Ashley. And the other change we see in the lineup for the Arizona Wildcats is Rondé Hollis Jefferson getting the start over Gabe York. Coach Sean Miller kind of going with his horses. And out of bounds. As that will be Arizona basketball. 11 turnovers on Missouri. Boog Rondé Hollis Jefferson last week before they played the University of California Irvine. He, he went to Sean Miller said, I'm more comfortable in the six-man role. It's for the betterment of our team if I come off the bench. Let Gabe York start. I play better coming off the floor and, and really just ultimate self-sacrifice. You, you don't hear that from a guy who is possibly a preseason All-American, one of the best players on this Arizona roster, to sacrifice his time and, and his name in the starting lineup. Really a credit to Rondé Hollis Jefferson and how he thinks team first. Seven point game, we get it going here, second half. Arizona was just two for 10 from beyond the three point line in the first half. There's Hollis Jefferson, and he flips it up and in. Great job of zone offense. They really used the ball screen well in the zone offense, and Matano turns the corner. He gets to about 15 feet, just enough to draw a guy, and for Rondé Hollis Jefferson to sneak behind the defense. Williams spinning, and they get a travel. And I don't think that's a travel. That's a nice pivot work by Jonathan Williams. As he spun, he did a left-right pivot, a little bit of an up and under. Thought that was a pretty good move by Williams. 
Sometimes just because it doesn't look right, right. doesn't mean that it's a violation. Here's a three. Thomas Jefferson. Well, that's what he went and worked on all over the summer. And that's his first made three of the season. He's now one for three. But they kind of like a roll and replace action there between McConnell, Tarzuski, and Jeff Hundley, Rondé Hollis Jefferson. The man with the biggest smile in college basketball knocking down the three, sparking Arizona early in the second half. So far, you're horrible at this, Flo. You got no talent for drawing, Flo. House, car, oh, raise the roof! No one? Remember when we used to raise the roof, Diane? Oh, quiet, Richard. I'm trying to make sense of Flo's terrible drawing. I'll draw the pants off that thing. Oh, oh, hats on hamburgers. Dancing, drive-in movie theater. Home and auto. Um, Squares. Uh, lamp. Lines. Stupid, dumb. No! Home and auto bundle from Progressive. Saves you money. Yay, game night. So much fun. Simon, what do you got? Well, this is Arizona navigating the zone defense. T.J. McConnell gets the high ball screen. The back door slip by Rondé Hollis Jefferson and the perfect pass as McConnell drew the attention of three Missouri Tiger defenders and then the excellent catch and finish by Hollis Jefferson on the backside. Rondé Hollis Jefferson and Arizona against the zone. 12 possessions, 13 points, and they're 5 out of 10 from the floor, pretty good. Well, the more they see it, the more comfortable they're gonna be. And early in this game, in the first half, they weren't getting the shots they wanted in the zone, but now they're really kicking it apart. They ran the same play two straight times in this half <laughs> and got buckets. And now Jonathan Williams, the third, with the nice drive and the soft touch off the high arcy layup. Kind of an underhanded flip shot with that right hand. Narzuski had it knocked away by post. See, and, and the problem with Tarzuski and that, they're running the set for him to go to the block. But he runs to 12 feet and catches them facing up. He's got to go to the block, hold his position, then they can enter it into the post. There's not a lot Tarzuski's going to do from 15 feet and out. McConnell spinning inside. And McConnell looking at Tarzuski as if to say, why aren't you grabbing that? Well, also, the whole bench, Damon Stoudemire, Sean Miller, they told McConnell to shoot that ball. Tarzuski was getting in position to, to get an offensive rebound there. McConnell had the wide open shot off the spin from about four feet. Schaumburg had it ripped away by Hollis Jefferson. Schaumburger going to the rim, but they get the foul. That's a nice little hesitation and go. Look at the hesitation as Tarzuski retreats to his man. Clean there by Hollis Jefferson, maybe a little body contact by McConnell. Yeah, they get the foul on McConnell, his first. And Schamberger knocks down the first. The senior transfer, we told you, from Hawaii. He's been playing over 34 minutes a game. That's a nice answer there by the Missouri Tigers after the 5-0 the run to start the half. Tigers answer back quickly with four points of their own. Johnson, elbow pull up, and that was way off. And Williams picks it up. Jonathan Williams, the third, his fourth rebound. Schamberger gives off. He can hit that. DJ McConnell, a Pittsburgh native, just like Sean Miller. A Duquesne transfer. Alice Jefferson trying to find Ashley. And it's out of bounds. It'll stay Arizona ball. Good rotation on the backside by West Clark to cut off the dive of Ashley and get his hand on that basketball and deflect it out of bounds. They find Ashley on the inbound. Short on that shot. And they get a foul inside. 
Monday Night Football coming your way. Monday Night Countdown starts at 6 Eastern, served by Applebee's, and then the Ravens and the Saints tonight, 8.15 Eastern time, Monday Night Football. Mike Tirico and John Gruden on the call there. And the foul down at that end of the court. Rondé Hollis Jefferson, it's his third. Love to see a set here for Montecchio Gil Caesar. Montecchio Caesar. Schamberger will pull up. And that one tracked down by York. See, on a possession like that, when York gets that long rebound, I would love to see McConnell, Johnson, sprinting the lanes and try to hit ahead like they did earlier in the first half when McConnell hit Stanley Johnson and he got the nice 10-footer. Arizona not putting enough pressure on Missouri defensively when they hold them to one and done. Johnson pulls up and one. And a freshman will go to the line. Obviously a little bit of an NBA continuation there by Johnson. Showing some of his versatility. We've seen him make the three-point shot, the back down there, the contact. We've seen twice now Johnson with the ability in the mid-range to use the glass at the proper angle. And kind of one guy that really did that well in the NBA was Scotty Pippen. When he played for the Bulls, always got 15, 17 feet on those angles. He was using the glass. Tim Duncan also great at it. Not an easy shot, a shot that must be practiced. Ten points now for the freshman Stanley Johnson, averaging about a dozen. And all of a sudden, Arizona's lead is 11. Jonathan Williams, the third, they say no shot. Tim Anderson can't believe it, especially with what you saw at the other end of the They want the same continuation there. No doubt. 40 to 29, our score here as we get it going, second half. Arizona by 11. Missouri naming Kim Anderson as their head coach. And Anderson, a former player at Missouri. There had been some talk about maybe he was too old for the job, maybe a little too boring. Anderson in the press conference had some fun with it. it took a long time to walk up those stairs. <laughs> took 15 years, and I'm uh, excited to be here. Apparently, I'm old. <laughs> I mean, I'm not the best coach in the country. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. I'm not. I'm not. I could steal, though, from anybody. Would you please come to the game? Okay? And if, and if you don't want to come, I understand. I understand there's other things going on. But for God's sake, give the ticket to somebody. Okay? Thank you. That's great. <laughs> great Real good. good. That's how you do it. That's how you attack it. Williams misses with that jumper. Johnson the other way. Kim Anderson, a former star at Missouri, taking over at his alma mater. He knows about the tradition. Played and coached under Norm Stewart. You know, one of the most telling things was uh, freshman Naaman Wright, a young man from Los Angeles, had, had committed to the previous staff and Frank Haith. And when their coaching change happened, Kim Anderson was going to let Neiman Wright walk and go wherever he wanted, but he, he searched he searched around a little bit, but he didn't find anything better, and, and he said he really felt comfortable with Coach Anderson and that he was just honest and a good person. You could tell Kim Anderson would get this program going back in the right direction as you see the nice drive by Montague Gil Caesar. And I, I actually just love saying that name, Montague <laughs> Gil Caesar. I'm going to say that all night. Valon Tarzuski, his third. Well, it's pretty clear that offensively, this is the guy that will be leading them this year. A big recruit for him. And coming in, averaging about 16 points a game, he's already got 10 here today. And I think as they get more pieces around him over the next year or so, this season's going to be really a growing experience for Gil Caesar because he's going to be the main guy in everybody's scouting report. The Tigers are going to have to live with him taking, taking and hopefully making some tough shots. He's going to get a lot of field goal attempts. His percentage might not be great because he's going to face every team's best defender, and he could wear down as the season goes along as they go through the SEC and play 30-some-odd games. 
But Kim Anderson got a talented player who will probably be a first-team all-conference guy before his career is all said and done. And again, at Huntington Prep, where he was a teammate with Andrew Wiggins. He's got a dozen here in this one. And the lead for Arizona down to single digits. Pitts looking for some help. And York off the mark. Post. York has such a good stroke, but he, if you watch a lot of times, I mentioned it in the first half when he shot a three-pointer, he quick shoots it. He rarely locks in his follow-through and completes his shot. He kind of puts the arm up and then snatches it back. Isabel in and out. If Gil Caesar is in their best shooter, it's probably Isabel. Ashley with another bucket. And it does it now for Ashley, the junior from Oakland. T.J. McConnell so good at those drag, late ball screens, finding Ashley on the pop as he gathered. And they are kind of just a broken play, and they find the backdoor layup for the Tigers. Jonathan Williams, the third now with six points. Ristich up and in, and that's good for the seven-footer from Serbia. Side as Gil Caesar was posting up Elliot Pitts. Here's what makes TJ McConnell so good. Just kind of the consummate point guard. You see the drag ball screen by Brandon Ashley, then the rescreen, making Jonathan Williams come over and just help a little bit. Gives up enough space. He throws it back. The perfect bounce pass. Ashley gathers. Hands were down by Williams by the time Ashley was going into his shot. And Ashley able to knock it down. You saw Isabel not sure what to do, whether to help or to abandon York. Well, I think the difference also this year for McConnell, he's more of a threat to score the basketball off those ball screens. As Jonathan Williams showing his driving ability, his first step with the quick layup. Oh. Stitch again, up and under. It's Missouri the other way. Schamberg kicks out. Isabel uh, had a good look at it. Got to knock that down. <laughs> Ashley no good. So Missouri hanging around. It's Arizona by nine. Under 13 to go second half. John Chambi and Miles Simon, the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Coming up tonight. It'll be Chaminade and Pitt, followed by BYU and San Diego State. Turn it over there. And Hollis Jefferson will go to the line and shoot two. And that's where he's so good out in transition. And that last foul on Gil Caesar, his second. And as we see Rondé Hollis Jefferson step to the line, we're going to see one of the most unique free throw shooting routines in college basketball. Rondé Hollis Jefferson taking his bounces and he gives his little shimmy, <laughs> which he absolutely loved. And during the NCAA tournament, Kevin Durant <laughs> actually gave him a little bit of a shout out on Twitter. I see you, Rondé, hashtag shoulder shimmy them people. <laughs> That's so big time. And, and, and last year <laughs> at Stanford, Sean Miller had put the Ixne on the shimmy. He misses his first four free throws of that game. There was a timeout called. Rondé says, I, I just don't feel comfortable without the shimmy, coach. He says, go ahead and do it. Finish the game five in a row. The shimmy will forever stay in Arizona basketball lore. It's outstanding. And you know that that made his day. Kevin Durant shot that. <laughs> that is too good. <laughs> Hashtag shoulder shimmy them people. That's great. No Gil Caesar, no Wes Clark in the game. Where's Missouri going to find the offense? Rosper trying, can't convert. Hollis Jefferson the board. 
got five rebounds. Johnson from the elbow. Ristich couldn't follow, and a rebound by Allen. Missouri the other way. Up ahead, Rosberg blocked by Johnson. Alice Johnson rejected by Rosberg. And now Deuce Bellow, Schamberger, and up and in. How about that back and forth action on both ends of the floor? Stanley Johnson coming out of nowhere to make the block, and then Rondé Hollis Jefferson thinking he has an easy one, and Ryan Rosberg with the block and kept it in play, most importantly, and then the layup on the other end by the Tigers. Tigers and Cats here in Maui. They get a foul inside. I think they got D'Angelo Allen. They did, and that's his second. And the Missouri Tigers just being scrappy. Here's the block first by for Stanley Johnson on one end. Arizona thinks they have an easy one, but Ryan Rossberg says, no, get that out of here. And it leads to the lay-in on the other end. And we're down to a nine-point game, about 10 minutes left. Nine back here at the La Honda Civic Center, John Chubby and Miles Simon, and former great coach for Missouri, Norm Stewart. 67 and 99, he was the head man and part of the group that won here in Maui in 1989. Ken Anderson, part of that staff. Wow, there, Johnson got a hand on it, eventually a loose ball. And what do they have? Out of bounds, Arizona basketball. And boom, that's almost too tough of a play. And just because a coach sets something up out of a timeout, if the defense reads it, you have to go to something else. You have to react to what the defense gives you. Missouri had sniffed out the lob. Stanley Johnson almost made an unbelievable, spectacular play. They're lucky to save the possession. But Parker Cartwright has to do a better job of reading and knowing what was there and what is not there. Hits pulls up. Karzuski a put back and he's fouled. Foul on Rosberg. That's his fourth. So Missouri is going to lose some size. And Kim Anderson elects to take Rosberg out of the game. When we talked to Sean Miller yesterday after practice, he was singing the high praises of Caleb Tarzuski. He said this young man doesn't get enough credit for how good he is on the defensive end and anchoring Arizona's pack line defense. He plugs on the ball screens. He hedges on ball screens. He's not a shot blocker or a rim protector in the sense that he's going to go up and affect shots, but he's a big body who is a great position defender. They can leave him one-on-one -on -one in the post nearly against anybody in the country. You know, they, they, this is a guy that has gotten better each and every year. His offensive game is coming around. His hands have gotten a little bit better. His body fat is 5%, and he's one of the hardest workers on the Arizona roster. Yeah, he's really raved about him defensively, likened him to an NFL offensive lineman that you don't you don't notice all the time. Well, Sean Miller, obviously when you're the third-ranked team of the country, there's a lot of pressure. There's been some heartbreak under Sean Miller at Arizona 2011, a loss in the Elite Eight to UConn by a couple. And then in the Sweet 16 by three to Ohio State. And then last year, a one-point loss in overtime to Wisconsin. Is this the year they finally break through and get to the Final Four? I think it is. Uh, I, I really like this team. Defensively, they're, they're going to continue to get better. The offense is still a work in progress. But the depth that he has this year, playing nine or ten guys, you have veteran and experience in T.J. McConnell. You have an instant star in Stanley Johnson playing the passing lane, getting the steal. 
getting the crowd hype. Boy, was that explosive and quick, and it happened fast. And as you mentioned earlier, the freight train was coming. Oh, man. Right into your living room. And, and back to your point about the Final Four, it's a team that is willing to sacrifice. When you talk about Rondé Hollis Jefferson giving up his starting spot on his own accord for the betterment of the team, that's ultimately going to help you win more games in March. Yeah, and it says something to the rest of the guys of the team in terms of a, a selfless approach. The year that we won the national title in 1997, I was suspended for the first semester academically. Our team got off to a red-hot start as you see the nice drive and kick and the freshman from Los Angeles, California, Naaman Wright, knocking down the deep three. But we had a guy, Jason Terry, who was starting, playing well. When I got back into the lineup for the second semester, I wasn't playing so hot. We lost our first few games. Jason Terry went to Lee Olsen in January after those games, after a road trip to L.A. where we got swept and said, Coach, we're better off if I come off the bench. Miles has been a two-year starter, put him back in the starting lineup, and ultimately that helped us be a better team and Jason Terry be one of the best six men in the country. How'd that season end for you? Uh, ended on a high note. We, we were able to uh, do something nice and put a ring on it. Last foul on Piano Post, and that is two on him. Tarzuski at the line. He's got the three points, eight rebounds. Look at four points. The lead is 10 for Arizona, 9.36 to go. And Montague Gil Caesar back in, the freshman from Canada. I think you got to give a lot of credit to Missouri kind of hanging around in this game. Defensively, they've mixed it up. Wes Clark hurts his knee in the first half. Gil Caesar's giving him some nice offensive production. Uh, Wes Clark coming out of the game. He's been limping. He actually put a sleeve on his right knee in the second half. So he's a little banged up, not feeling great. This is Naaman Wright. This is a Missouri team that's almost essentially starting over with what they lost last year. They lose over 51 points per game from Jordan Clarkson, Jabari Brown, and Ernest Ross. 87% of their three-point production and 78% of their scoring. Johnson. And he'll go and shoot two. More basketball coming your way on Wednesday. It's the battle for Atlanta's ESPN2 at noon. It'll be North Carolina and Butler, 2 Eastern ESPN2, Oklahoma and UCLA, and then UAB and Wisconsin. And that one. All part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. And there's Wes Clark. You can see him favoring that knee. And again, he put the sleeve on that right knee, was not wearing that when he banged it on the hardwood in that first half. And the key for Clark is going to be as he's still kind of stretching it out, you can tell it's getting stiff. The sleeve is probably more to try to keep that knee warm. Maybe from not swelling up too much is going to be how he treats it tonight after the game because in the Maui Invitational, you're playing three games in three days, and Wes Clark is obviously a key component to the Tigers having success. 13-point advantage for Arizona, biggest of the game. Kim Anderson wanted a foul. That's 15 turnovers on Missouri. Stanley Johnson knows he got away with one right there as he looked over to us here at the scores booth, gave a little wink. Arizona's only turned it over five times. This is a big spot here for Missouri. Can't let this deficit grow. Ashley posting on Williams. Ashley lost the handle. Out of bounds, it'll stay with Arizona 11 on the clock. The hard thing about running the two-man game there is that when McConnell passed the basketball, everybody stood. So the defense was locked into a spot, leaving no room for Ashley to operate. Ashley rejected by Post, but they get a foul. Ashley looks fresh, looks athletic, looks explosive, no lingering effects from the foot injury suffered last season. Got a dozen points, yeah, that 
That injury he suffered at Cal. They were 21 and 0. Lost that game on a buzzer beater, and, and it just randomly insult to injury. But you're talking about a guy who's from the Bay Area, and his season-ending injury takes place in front of all his friends and family. Yeah, and it really might have even altered his professional career. I know Ashley was thinking about maybe turning pro after the last season. But actually, for the betterment of the Arizona team for this year, he's back, he's healthy, and hoping to lead them to, to big things come March. Williams, right-handed scoop shot, and he's fouled by Tarzuski. And that'll be number four on the seven-footer out of New Hampshire. Jonathan Williams has been ultra-aggressive here in the second half, had a, some nice drives to the basket. Showing the versatility, you've seen the face-up jump shots. Jonathan Williams, the third will go to the line to shoot two. He has started every game in his career. He's a Memphis, Tennessee native from Southwind High School. Won a state title as a senior there. He also played on the under-17 Team USA world title team along with Stanley Johnson a couple summers ago. See that right knee. Got that brace on there, and Williams battled a meniscus injury in the summer. They did not scope it, no surgery, just rehab. And he's pretty well all the way back. Hollis Jefferson down. They kick it out, McConnell will go to work. 13 is Arizona's lead. See, they're just standing, they're not moving. That way, Schamberger's just locked in on the defensive end. Johnson tracks down the rebound. And Mike Stevens has double foul. He rushes in and a double foul on the court. Nashley can't believe it. Wildcats on top of the Tigers here by 13. ESPN's exclusive presentation of color. Thanks, back here in Maui and Arizona leading 54 to 41. Part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's and well, they got an outstanding freshman on their team to the Arizona Wildcats, so he asked T.J. McConnell, Stanley Johnson, what do you think? Stan Best way to describe him is probably be freight train. Yeah, freight train indeed. He gets out into the open court. And that's one of the things, just in a bigger picture, you'd like to see them push it a little bit more to take advantage of what Stanley Johnson brings. I really think Arizona has the horses and the athletes and the depth to put pressure on teams defensively, create some turnovers, but more importantly, get out and transition and run and put pressure on teams on the offensive end of the floor. Stanley Johnson, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, Brandon Ashley, you got athletes. You have guys in Pitts and York that can spot up and shoot the ball, and you have a, a great decision maker in T.J. McConnell that can lead those fast breaks. Beat inside, Ristich flips it in. Ristich, a guy that Coach Sean Miller and the staff are very, very high on. Offense, his offense is the head of the defense. He can spot up shooting at seven feet. You see the nice touch around the basket. See how much he plays with Tarzuski on the bench with those four fouls. Gil Caesar off balance shot. Rosberg trying to track it down. There's Hollis Jefferson, Wildcats on the go. McConnell. See, if you're going to take that shot, it, it was there a chance before. before on a catch and shoot. It's harder to shoot that shot off the dribble. If not, run the offense, get the motion going. Schamberger hits. Schamberger's going to be a nice piece for this team. They really run almost a two-point guard offense with Clark and Schamberger. Out there, both of them excellent defenders. But they're young, and they need a... a a veteran presence as York finally able to bury one from the outside there. Well, Clark makes a mistake there. He goes under the screen, the little flare screen on a shooter, and York just right in rhythm with the beautiful rotation and the knockdown. Sam 
Roethlisberger try to feed Rosberg. They turn it over. 16-point advantage for Arizona. 16 turnovers on Missouri. Another team has shot it all that well. Hanging and he's fouled. And he'll shimmy his way to the line. <laughs> a reminder Wednesday's championship game here at the A Sports Valley Invitational, part of ESPN's Journey to the Tourney, presented by Sonic. A season long spotlight on games that will impact the tourney. And you see Rondé with that free throw stroke. The thing that he spent time on this summer was just kind of his form shooting. Just being more fluid in his motion. Kind of got rid of the little hitch or hiccup that he had in his shot previously. Well, one of the things that they tracked this stuff last year, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, a total of 22 points on jumpers last season. So almost all of his baskets and his damage done in close to the hoop. And, and he's not a guy, you know, he obviously wants to play in the NBA. He, he probably turned down some money this past year to come back and try to improve on his game, but he doesn't necessarily have to be a jump shooter or a great three-point shooter to make it in the NBA. The, the things that people like about Rondé Hollis Jefferson is that he's a good defender, he can pass the ball, he's long, and he's athletic. Johnson able to save it, but Gil Caesar picks it up, and then they get the bump on Parker Jackson Cartwright. 18-point Arizona advantage. Sean Miller's team continuing to try and grow and learn. Obviously, you lose talent like Nick Johnson and Aaron Gordon. And yeah, things change. And not just talent, leadership. Yep. Nick Johnson was the vocal, vocal leader on this team. I been through some tough wars under Sean Miller. And, you know, he's off to the NBA as a second round pick. Aaron Gordon is, you know, a top five pick. There's nothing, obviously, he should have gone. But in Nick Johnson, you also lose a guy who is probably the best on the team in creating his own shot. He was a good defender. So a lot of a lot of pieces, but but they're filling him nicely with, with Johnson and, and the things that Hollis Jefferson is doing. calls timeout. 5-12 to go here, second half. And it's all Arizona, 17-point bulge for the Wildcats, the number three team in the country. John Chambi, Miles Simon, when you, you look at this Arizona team, Miles, and you go down the road, we can obviously see areas where they will grow and improve. But if there is a spot where they're vulnerable, if there's a spot where you think, okay, this could be an area where they will struggle, what would it be for Arizona? The thing I think it's going to be is their three-point shooting. Are they going to be able to knock shots down behind the arc consistently enough to keep defenses honest, to open up the paint area and driving lanes for guys like Stanley Johnson and Rondé Hollis Jefferson? Can Pitt and can Elliott Pitt and Gabe York step into that role and be knocked down, lights out three-point shooters for this Arizona team? On a ball, 5-12 to go here, second half. And Johnson to inbound. Stanley Johnson with 14 points in this one. Rondé Hollis Jefferson with 13. Ashley is 13 as well for the Wildcats. Marzuski backing down. Nice shot by the big guy. Caleb with seven. Clark slash 
rushing crew. Couldn't spin it home. And then Williams with a putback. 11 for Jonathan Williams, the third. Timeout called by Kim Anderson. Arizona has been here in Maui six different times. Miles Simon, my partner, you were here as a player, 1997. The Boston College of Kentucky lost to Duke in the title game, and then 2005, you were here as an assistant coach. And then this year, we bring you back as broadcaster and high diver. You went over to Black Rock, climbed all the way up there, <laughs> and then you got the GoPro, and there he is. <laughs> here it is. Uh, how was that experience for you, partner? Uh, it was really fun. I, I am a thrill seeker. I love zip lining, I don't know, parasailing, helicopter rides, all that stuff. The most dangerous part is actually just climbing up the rock because your footing is a little bit unsteady. The rocks hurt your feet, but the jump, the jump was cool. Had a fun time up there. You stuck the landing. Nicely done. <laughs> Almost five seconds there. All Arizona right here as they are up by 17. And they get an offensive foul. I think they may have gotten Tarzuski. Yeah, that's number five. He's done. So Tarzuski finishes seven points and eight rebounds as he fouls out. And here you see some of the versatility in Arizona's lineup. McConnell, screen and rescreen action. Tarzuski just sliding, moving his hip right into the Tiger defender. Pretty simple there on the call. Clark now finds Rosberg, lays it in. Nice play. Russ Clark with a nice dime. The possession before he got in the paint and drew a couple defenders and freed Williams up for an offensive rebound. They get an offensive foul again. This time they get Gabe York for the moving screen. Our under four timeout will be back in Maui right after this. State who played very well in knocking off Purdue 88 79. Marcus Foster with 24 still to come. Pitt and Chaminade, BYU and San Diego State. Sean McDonough, Frank for Schiller with the call on those two games coming up tonight. 9 Eastern ESPNU for Pitt and Chaminade here at the Lahaina Civic Center. And that BYU, San Diego State, is going to be just kind of a contrast to Siles. BYU, one of the best scoring teams annually across the country. Tyler Hawes returns, and San Diego State is just nasty on the defensive end. Just kind of shut you down, lock you down every game. Tyler Hawes, second leading returning scorer in the nation. San Diego State, played that game during our marathon against Utah. And that was uh, not a, an offensive <laughs> Mona Lisa. It was ugly to say the least. Aztecs really miss point guard Xavier Thames. They're throwing it in with Akil Quinn, Trey Kell. But they have some nice pieces, some long athletic guys, Angelo Troll, J.J. O'Brien, Skylar Spencer. Chris Collinsworth back for BYU after suffering the ACL tear late in the season last year. All of a sudden, the lead down to 13. Another 3.30 to go. McConnell handling. Mizzou just continues the battle. Be physical, trying to get stops. Make a little bit of a run. Yeah, McConnell gets fouled on the floor by Deuce Bello. Bellow, the Baylor transfer. Very athletic guy who played 10 minutes a game for Scott Drew in his couple of years in Waco. There's McConnell now. Transfer himself out of Duquesne. People talk about him being from Pittsburgh, comes from a basketball family. Sean Miller doesn't run from the comparison. He does see a little bit of himself in, in T.J. McConnell, a, a pass-first type point guard. They really see the game almost the same way. They pretty much speak the same language on the court in, in how they play, their toughness. 
the way they pass the ball, their team first guys. Sean Miller had a really good career at Pitt. McConnell's the first returning point guard that Sean Miller's had. He's had almost a different guard every year. Nick Wise to Momo Jones to Josiah Turner to Mark Lyons. Russ Clark couldn't hit. McConnell tracks down the board. TJ McConnell played for his dad, Tim, in high school. His aunt is the head women's coach at Pitt. His other aunt is actually her assistant. McConnell into the paint. Alice Jefferson to throw down. Just probed into defense and eventually found his man. Excellent patience on the offensive end. He's, he's been navigating those ball screens to perfection all night long. And Williams gets fouled. And here you see the hesitation. He waits for Rossberg to release. And then Rondé Hollis Jefferson just ghosting behind the defense, just hiding, waiting for his time. And then the little drop step and the hard finish. And Rondé Hollis Jefferson, 15 points, and our Barbasol player of the game. He's got four fouls now, does Hollis Jefferson. Over his brother, Relier, who played at Temple, playing overseas now. Two fifteen to go, Arizona by 17. The number three ranked team in the country. York pulls down the Williams miss. As we close in on two to go. Winner of this one taking on Kansas State. Arizona just in a motion, passing game offense. Keeping the floor spread, running, running the time. Bringing time tick down, time and score on their side. Ashley working and he's fouled. Rosberg got him. And that's five. The afternoon is over for Ryan Rosberg. And back into the game, D'Angelo Allen as Rosberg fouls out with four points and five boards. Ashley at the line, Brandon Ashley with 13 points. Got off to a good start, really got their their offense going in that first half. And then they started to move the ball around and getting Johnson and Hollis Jefferson involved. He had 10 in that first half. He was the only guy that was really clicking on the offensive end. He was finding some soft spots in the zone against the man-to-man. -man. He was able to get some, some open looks at the rim. And it just showed you Stanley Johnson, who had a, a good game. They were able to get the freshman Johnson out in transition. And he used that, that frame to explode, dubbed the freight train by T.J. McConnell. McConnell grabs a seat. Arizona by 19, under 90 seconds to go. Here from the Lahaina Civic Center, the A Sports Maui Invitational. Name and right, the freshman steps back, short. Gil Caesar lost the handle, but he's fouled. And it's Hollis Jefferson. Here's nope, they're going to get the foul on Parker Jackson Carton. Parker Caesar goes to the line to shoot you. When we spoke with Coach Anderson after practice yesterday, he said one thing that he, I asked him, you know, how are you going to build this program and get it back to the top of the SEC? He said, well, we're really just going to build with young kids and go with the freshmen, let the chemistry grow, let them learn and grow together as a group. 
It's going to be a gradual process. A big part of it's going to be this young man on the foul line, Montague Gil Caesar. You like the looks of what he brings to the floor, the athleticism, the length. He gets to the line. He's just not a jump shooter. He's really a kind of almost a pure scorer. Still to come, more basketball. This one from Brooklyn. It'll be number 12, Villanova, number 14, VCU. And that's at the conclusion of this one. Parker Jackson Cartwright, the lightning quick point guard. Ristich sets the screen. Ristich will try a three. And a seven-footer from Serbia showing the touch. Out of bounds, Arizona basketball. Missouri with 17 turnovers in a game. Arizona, one thing they did very well today, took care of the ball. Just six turnovers for the Wildcats. Feet inside post is up and under would go. Offensive rebound, and he will go to the line. Piano Post, a native of Canada. The senior will head to the line. 3.3 seconds to go in this one. So it'll be Arizona and Kansas State. And Miles, if K-State plays the way they played earlier today and Arizona plays this way, it's going to be a good game. Yeah, it's going to be a different type of game for this Arizona Wildcat team. You're going to see some pressure from Kansas State. you got an elite score in Marcus Foster and inside presence in Thomas Gibson. Should be an excellent semifinal matchup tomorrow. And it's still to come here in Maui. It'll be Shamanad and Pitt, and then the late game, BYU and San Diego State. They get our final here. Number three, Arizona wins it 72 to 53. Our final score. For our entire crew and Miles Simon, I'm John Chambi saying aloha from Maui. All Arizona in this one. Now we send you to Doug Sherman, Dan Dockich at the Barkley Center, Villanova, VCU.